My name is uh, Samir Parmar and I am an application engineer with the Machine Vision Group at SIC USA. Assuming you've already watched the first video and are successfully able to connect to the Ranger E, Ranger D or the Ruler camera, you should be able to now look at this video and uh, be able to use it uh, to work inside the Ranger Studio environment. Before you even establish your con connection, one thing I want you to make sure is uh, under your frame grabber options, make sure this parameter is set to 512. What this stands for is uh, how many profiles or how many lines you want uh, to be considered as a buffer by the PC. And this is applicable when you are working in a triggered mode. And I'll talk about this further when we are inside the video. Once you have done that, go ahead and uh, select the type of uh, your camera and go ahead and connect to the camera. Once uh, the connection has been established, uh, you will notice that there are two modes that we work in. One is an image mode and one is a measurement mode. And you should be able to go ahead and load a parameter file. Click load and then browse to my computer, C drive, program files. And this is assuming if you have installed the software in its default location, 3D cameras, studio and in this case I'm using a Ranger E so I will go to this particular folder and you will notice that there are multiple parameter files and each of the parameter files have got a different combination of components so I will go ahead and select the high 3D so once the parameter file is loaded I can edit it and if you go and look into it we again have an image tab and a measurement tab and in the measurement tab we have one component in this particular parameter file which is the high 3D component and the word component can be interchanged with algorithm so the high 3D is one component that we have available to figure out where exactly the laser line is on the part and this gives us the highest resolution uh, 1 16th of a sub pixeling but then again as far as the profile rate is concerned it's about four to five thousand profiles per second it's the slowest component available if you compare this to for example the horizontal threshold we can have up to about thirty to thirty five thousand profiles per second but then now because it's using a different methodology or algorithm this one will give us either a half a sub pixel resolution or a quarter sub pixel resolution so we have uh, multiple components available uh, to use depending on the application requirements other components are also grayscale components. What this means is that we could have under the measurement tab multiple components in the same parameter file in any combination that you want provided that you make sure that you don't overlap the same sensor row or the same sensor area with multiple components. And you can try loading different parameter files and you will see that they have they are certain parameter files which have multiple components within the same uh, measurement tab so the image tab again we will use this in order to make sure that we focus our lens we open our aperture we adjust our exposure and make sure that the image looks good once we have figured that one out we use these parameters and replicate them onto the measurement tab and this is where we actually acquire the real data so having said this we will go ahead and switch to the image mode and we will click on start and what we see is a laser line over here uh, on the base plate and I can now go in my edit mode under the image mode you can see that I'm looking at all the columns 0 to 15 36 so starting from left to right that's how the columns go I'm looking at uh, all the rows from 0 to 512 so top to bottom I will increase my exposure time and I do this so that just that you can see what it looks like uh, what the image looks like and I will put the part that I'm going to be scanning over here as you can see what it is is basically it's a soap bar right so I will put this underneath the camera and we will scan this as our test object so I can now go back again and uh, adjust uh, my exposure time to something really less because uh, the higher the exposure time the slower the application would be so for the purpose of this exercise we will let's say start with maybe 500 but that's too less though we don't see much of the data at all so I'll increase that to maybe 
1500 and now I can at least see what the laser line looks like the contour becomes more visible moreover uh, I want you to see that uh, when I put my mouse over here on the screen we get the data as far as the row number and the column rom number at the bottom of the screen here so I don't want to use all the 512 columns because that's going to take too much time I don't need to use the entire imager because I'm only interested in this portion over here so I can see that at this point over here my row number is 284 and I probably need to use uh, I probably need about 100 rows or so to be able to acquire my data so what I will do is I will go in my edit mode and I'm gonna say I'm gonna enable this parameter and what this does is basically this is gonna show me dotted lines as far as what the start row and the number of rows I'm trying to use but those parameters I configure them in the measurement mode so I will so we will put down the start row to be equal to 270 and the number of rows obviously get auto adjusted automatically over here since if I started 270 I only have this much rows available and I will configure this to be let's say 100 rows but when I try to do this it doesn't let me do that and we can see the messaging at the bottom that this number has to be a multiple of 16 so I'll try, put it, try putting 96 over here and that parameter will be accepted and then what you see is basically you see that these dotted lines appear over here showing that what's my start